Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Hi everybody, it's Dave Vellante, back with John Furrier. This is theCUBE, we're live at EMC World 2015. Anthony Smith is here, he's a converged infrastructure specialist at Lotus Formula One team. Anthony, welcome to theCUBE, it's great to see you. Thank you very much. So, how is it that you guys go so fast? I don't know if you saw the keynote <laughs> Monday, but uh, with, the, with, the, with the motorcyclist, did you uh, see yeah, that? I'm not going to say anything about that. Okay. <laughs> it was pretty funny, tweeted that out. Check my Twitter stream. So, welcome, um, cool stuff that you guys are doing. Yeah. And uh, you're helping educate the world on how data is so important to you guys winning races. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Because we're, we're looking for uh, hundreds of a second on the car, you know. Everybody out there, we're competing with some very, very clever people. So everybody's doing similar things and we're, we're trying to beat them, you know. It, it's a competitive advantage. And if we can get a competitive advantage through our data, that's, uh, that's the way we win races. And it's a real horses for courses type of thing, right? I mean, in terms of every course is different, your strategy changes, some courses you're worried about tire wear, other courses you're not so much worried about that. How does the data affect those outcomes? Oh, well, we're, we're constantly gathering the data from the cars. It's going around, we, we do tests, and then during the race as well. And we've got, a, there's over 150 sensors on the car. We get about 60 gigabytes of data per race weekend. And we're using that to analyze the performance analyze our strategy, make our decisions, and we're doing that live. So there's a, there's a constant stream off the car, about uh, two megabits. And, and, that's, and then we use that and we, we use uh, mod modeling. We uh, do proper statistical modeling. We do simulations. We simulate about 20,000 different race outcomes every lap. So what makes every you lap? Every lap. <laughs> so we're analyzing what everybody else is doing. But everybody does the same thing, yeah, you know. Okay. We're, we're looking at how fast they're going, we're looking at, we make estimates as to their fuel load, their tires, you know, we, we, we try and guess, we've got to try and second guess them, and we've got to try and beat them. It, it used to be art, John. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so give an example of where you guys were, changed your strategy, or avoided Ooh. catastrophe, or won, or give some practical examples to the audience out there, because it, it's a lot of sensors, a lot of data, yeah. I mean, well, all the, all the time we're, we're, we're making decisions that, are, that affect the car. We've got to get the car to the finish, for, for one thing, and so that affects our fuel load, our fuel strategy. So, typical race, say, one kilo of fuel, so two pounds of fuel in the car is going to be worth about 300th of a second a lap, which doesn't sound much, but over 70 laps, that's two seconds. And then we've had races where the race has been won by 0.7 of a second. You know, we, we had a race uh, last year where one kilo of fuel would have been the difference between second place and fifth place. So that's just one kilo and that's just one part of the car. There's so much going on. There's the tire wear, there's the brake wear. We can change the fuel consumption of the car as we're going around the track. Okay, so let's go under the hood, so to speak, okay. um, with, e with EMC. What are you guys doing with them um, from a tech perspective? How do you roll it out? What's going on? Well, EMC are a yeah, technical partner of Lotus Formula One team. So they supply us with all of our back-end systems, effectively. So we've got a, a couple of V-blocks at the factory. So that gives us, we've got two data centers. So we've got an active-active pair. So we're completely resilient there. That's for all of our data and our, all our anal analysis there. And then at the track, we take a, a smaller V-block, a 220. We take that to every race that we do. So the that's- The mobile V-block. Mobile V-block, yeah. <laughs> and that's 20 races and that flies around the world and it sits in the garage, pretty much next to the car, with no cooling, nothing like that, not in a data center, you know, it's, it gets a hard life. But uh, we, we rely on that, and it's, uh, it's critical to what we do. And so what are you guys showing at the, at the show here? What are you guys uh, doing in, in the booth? Uh, well, we've got, uh, over at the booth, we've got a, a real race car, and we're doing uh, wheel changes, so there's a competition going on, just to show people how difficult it is, because people see it on the TV, and we can do it in uh, 2.1 seconds, change all four wheels on the car. Wow. So uh, that's, that's pretty good. So we're giving people a bit of an experience of that, to give them a bit of an experience of Formula One and what we're actually doing. We've got simulators, uh, we've got these uh, fitness response machines, because our drivers have got to be super fit and super, super agile. Would you say your adoption of this sort of data orientation um, occurred in a big spike, or has it been sort of a a slow maturity climb. Can you describe it's, that? It, it's both. It's you, you've got a you've got a gradual, uh, a gradual sort of gain, but also you get these big jumps in technology, which is you know things like private cloud virtualization, that sort of thing. Because when we go trackside, 
we're running about 120 servers. And so you, that's running on our B block. We can't do that with physical servers. There's no way. We pay for the uh, the freight that we send around. You know, we pay for every every kilo of weight we uh, we have to send. We have to pay for. So being able to virtualize it was a massive step, and uh, most of the teams uh, are now doing that. So it, it is the most competitive business that you can think of. You're talking about you know hundreds of a second make a difference. Yeah. And you're all trying to, you know, chasing the same model, the same price. People leave companies; they go to different teams. Yep. How do you maintain a competitive advantage? We've got to do everything we can. Uh, you know, we've got some very clever people. We're trying to think of every, every possible way that we can get that advantage. Whether it's through parts on the car, whether it's through data manipulation, data analysis, simulation, all of that sort of thing is all key to what we're doing. And you know, we, that's why we work so closely with EMC. In terms of being having an agile system that we can that changes and that evolves and that improves. Well, imagine trying to minimize the amount of what I call non-differentiated heavy lifting that you're doing, right? Because you don't want people fiddling with patching, <laughs> trying to innovate up the curve. But you've got converged infrastructure in your title. Yeah, that's a relatively new title. New it, it, it is a very new title uh, for me because I haven't been with the company that long. But, but even the I, industry, I, it's new, yeah, right? yeah. I you know I, I cover all the uh, uh, basically all the EMC real estate that we have. So that's it is it is new. It's evolving. You know, as, as you say, that job wouldn't have been there. Sort of converge infrastructure specialist. Sort of a couple of years ago, there, you know, there wasn't. And we're moving. We got converged, and then we're going hyper converged. So, is there going to be a, con a hyper converged infrastructure specialist? Well, it's interesting, right? The hyper converged piece is software driven. How does that change? What are your, what are your thoughts on the so-called hyper converged? Well, of course, we're looking at it. You know, it's it's progress. If we can minimize the equipment that we take. We can up the reliability, we can up the uh, flexibility that we've got, and the ability to do more with it. We only take one person to do the IT track side. That's it. So really? the, kit, the kit has got to be bulletproof, because it's got to run. We haven't got the time to, to fix it or anything to go wrong. It's just got to work. What's your experience been with that? I mean, it's, you know, sometimes things go wrong at the, I've, on I've, the track. I've, uh, I've had a lot of experience in Formula One, and I've had a lot of things go wrong, but, but the stuff that we've got with, uh, with the V-Box has been great. Really? I, I can say that, you know. Yeah, so your IT infrastructure has not been, you know, like some of the problems you have with the mechanical issues or engine we, issues. I, I had uh, a terrible race um, about, uh, about eight years ago. I blew up 15 UPSs in one weekend. <laughs> I don't know where I got them from. Uh, I was, uh, <laughs> so what would the world be like without DCE and the V block? You'd have to have stack servers. What would the alternative be? Well, you know, this, uh, we moved from, when we uh, joined up with uh, uh, EMC and DCE, we moved from a completely disparate system. It was storage from one, it was compute from another, uh, it was all over the place. But with, you know, with the, with the VCE stuff, we've got a completely converged system, it's one contact, it's one system that all works together. We do, we do the matrix upgrades, we know everything is going to work. It's, uh, it just takes, it just makes things that much easier for us. So Anthony, I got to ask you, when you're having a pint, sitting around with the, with the guys and, and the gals, and you're you know getting creative, what do you think about the future of what you do next? I mean, because you can instrument the hell out of everything, Yeah. right? So where is the creative juices going next? The way on, you on, on our side, on the IT side, we've, you know, we're shrinking the, the footprint that we've got, as everybody is. We're reducing the power consumption. We're doing all the normal things that people are doing in data centers, but on a smaller scale. We're also moving towards the, the proper meaning of big data and actually going right across our data sets to actually get more out of it because you know we can a race engineer can only look at a certain amount of data. He's a piece of person. Yeah. Whereas if we can automate that, if we can get proper big data systems in there to actually look across and through those data sets, we think there's advantages to have you had in that for sure. When you look at EMC and the Federation, there are essentially three different companies, actually four if you look at you know RSA's in there too. Um, are they you tapping into other parts of the federation? Yep. Or is there a wish list? We, you we, we, we've got a, a wish list. We're we're trying to get you know the, the parts of the federation that we've got. We're covering you know we've got the uh, the V blocks that are perfect for us. You know we've got uh, the the, um, the whole of the big data side of it. We've got the security side of it. We've got the VMware side of it. All of those parts fit in with what we're doing. So it's absolutely yeah. you know it's great to be uh, involved. What what kind of Future requirements do you, do you need from EMC? What do you want them to do to make your life better, to make you more competitive, help you win more races? 
Ooh, well, we we're after anything that we can uh, that we can get that will give us an advantage. So whether that's raw compute, whether it's storage, whether it's flexibility. So we're looking at a, you know we're looking at the new stuff. We're looking at VSpec Blues. We're looking at VX racks. Uh, we're looking at the big data side of things. We are fully um, sort of EMC throughout. We've got tiered storage with our and the archives with our Atmoses and the data domains, all that sort of stuff. But we're just wanting to push it further and push it harder to work better for us. And, and a lot of the data analysis that you're doing, of course, is real time. Um, yeah. What about after the fact? What are you doing with that? You know, well, we, 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 we keep it because, of course, we, we need it. We're then analyzing it, we're feeding it back into our systems. We're looking at different ways, comparing it with previous years. We're feeding it into our simulators that we've got in the UK. Uh, we've, we've got R&D facilities, so we can play back a race uh, once we've done it, or even join the tests. We can play the data back to a car that's on a, uh, what we call a seven post rig. So we can drive each of the wheels, and it's as if the car's going around the circuit, and we can refine the performance and get it better for the next race, because we know that we've got to move on, because all the other teams are moving on doing the same sort of stuff. So when we go to a race, we don't just go with a car and then set it up. We go knowing how the car needs to be set up, and then we just make fine tweaks to it, because there's so much that can be, uh, that can be changed on the car. I think there's 1,600 separate parameters that we can tweak on the car, that we can change. And they all need to be right when we get to the circuit, because we only have an hour and a half, two one and, one and a half hour sessions on a Friday to basically set the car up. We don't test during the, during the year, we've got um, uh, two tests during the year, that's it. Three at the beginning of the year and then two during the season. So we've got to simulate, we've got to take that data and feed it back into the system and then progress. How much data are we talking about here? It's about um, 60 gigabytes per weekend that we collect off the car. We've got, um, as I say, we've got about 150 sensors. It's about a two megabit stream off each car. Um, 25 megabytes per lap, that sort of amount of data. So it's not huge. Right. We're not talking about the petabytes. We generate plenty back at the factory as well with our uh, computational modeling. We're producing about, I think it's a uh, terabyte a week. Okay. In, in terms of the sort of back-end data analysis, what kind of techniques are you using to, to perform that? We've got a lot of in-house tools that, uh, that we use at the moment for analyzing our data. So, um, and of course we're, we're refining those. We've got our own software developers. Um, so, it's all, it's, it, it, it fits in with the whole Formula One thing, which is very, very iterative. We do something, we refine it, we do it again, we get better and we get better and we get better. And so the communications from the on-site data center yeah. to somebody in the pit crew, uh, to the driver, what is that individual that, that your systems are communicating to? What, is, what does he <laughs> have in his hand? Is it a mobile device? Has he got a little laptop there? Has he got a, they, he got a mainframe? <laughs> well, we've, 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 of course we, we virtualize the servers and yeah, they sit right. on the V-Block. People have laptops. They're there analyzing the data. They're using the powerful compute capacity that we've got on the VMs to do the data crunching. And they all happen, the, um, We've got statistics packages that we're running all the time as we're gathering the data, so we can see how the car's behaving, and then we'll go back to the driver, say during a test session, and we'll show the driver where what he's doing and where we think we can make improvements. And you know, we say, right, you can at this point you need to be doing something else, and we will show him what's called an overlay, where we put two graphs on top of each other. But it, it's not quite that simple, but. That's one of the things and we the, do. And the communications to the driver, is it all sort of uh, audio, or has he got, does he have a, a dashboard as well? No, we, um, we, can only, we can talk to the driver. Yeah. Um, that's two way, and we get the data from the car, but we can't transmit back. Part of the rules say we can't transmit back to the car. And he's, he's fairly busy in that's the car. That's a safety issue, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. He's, he's fairly busy in that car, so yeah. he gets yeah. his lap time. He gets information to say whether he's faster or slower than he, uh, than he was, you know, than his fastest lap, that sort of thing. And we're giving him all that feedback all the time which comes, of course, from the data, and it comes from our strategy decisions, which come from the data. Uh, interesting. All right, Anthony, listen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate your time, yeah. insights, really interesting story. Thank you. All right, appreciate it. Keep right there, everybody. John and I will be back with our next guest right after this. This is theCUBE, we're live from EMC World 2015. We'll be right back. <laughs>